What is going on, everyone? Jeremy here, MTG Headquarters. Pushing my way through a bit of uh, magic burnout by giving you a couple different kinds of videos. So hopefully you checked out the die collection video or the spin down collection video. Um, I think you might enjoy it if you didn't watch it, but let's get right on to a opening some random stuff. So stuff started coming into the PO box this week. Uh, so this is going to be fun. Um, next week we'll have, or probably the following week we'll have even more stuff. So if you have stuff laying around, you want to see it open, you can send it into the PO box should you want to. Otherwise I have enough stuff kind of floating around to keep the series going just fine as well. Uh, so I kind of grabbed some random little stuff and also some accessories that I thought were kind of cool that maybe we want to take a look at, a little closer look at. But I'm going to actually start with, if anybody remembers this thing, a Battle of the Horde deck. Uh, this is during Born of the Gods. They had these kind of um, side battles. On the back it says, your hero's path has led you here to Deathbellow Canyon. It's a treacherous place in its own right, but far more dangerous are the ravenous minotaurs that stalk the canyon's caves. We stand the tide of horns and hooves that crashes towards you and become the hero you were meant to be. So you get 60 challenge cards, instructional playmat, um, and then you basically battle against this deck with your deck. So, um, you know, if you have a high-powered modern or standard deck, maybe it wouldn't be so fun because you might just kind of get wrecked. I mean, you might wreck this deck, but I don't know. I mean, some people said, you know, you can kind of amp up the difficulty, and it's just a fun little side game. I actually like um, keeping it around for... I have one that's opened, but I like keeping it around kind of as a board game. Kind of, I keep it with my dual decks, anthology stuff. and So if people want to come over and we want to play Magic, but we're kind of sick of playing Constructed um, or like standard just 1v1 Magic, we could play something like this. So let's get into, let me actually open this. So you have this deck basically, that you play against. So you have Minotaur Gore Seekers that are 3-2 haste creatures. You have Longhorns that are 2-2 haste creatures. What else do we have? Ooh, Mogus Chosen. Uh, what, Phoboros? Fo Phoerobos? Phoberos Reaver? Then you've got Reckless Minotaurs. All sorts of fierce consuming rage. Fun stuff. Intervention of Kyranos, Massacre Totem. I'm gonna re-familiarize myself a little bit because this is a couple years ago, but basically you start with up to three different hero cards on the battlefield. You don't need a hero to play. Uh, you take three turns at the start of the game before the horde takes its first turn. Okay. You can attack the horde with your creatures as though it were a player, even before the horde takes a turn. The horde doesn't have a life total, but its library serves a similar purpose. If the horde would lose life, put that many cards from the top of its library into the graveyard. Watch for artifact cards in the horde's library. They have a hero's reward ability that triggers when the artifact is put into the graveyard. So you see... On a uh, Massacre Totem, Hero's Reward says, When the Massacre Totem is put into a graveyard from anywhere, put the top seven, card of the Horde's, seven cards of the Horde's library into the graveyard. Its actual abilities at the beginning of the Horde's pre-combat main phase reveal an additional card from the top of the Horde's library. The Horde casts that card. Um... So you can target the Horde with spells and abilities as though it were a player, even before the Horde takes a turn. Do, do, do. Um, so at the beginning of the Horde's pre-combat main phase, reveal the top two cards of the Horde's library. Then the Horde casts those cards. Uh, you make the choice if the Horde needs to make a decision. 
ignore the effects that would cause the horde to draw or discard cards, or perform other impossible actions. If one of the horde's permanents would move to any zone other than the library or graveyard, that card is instead put into the graveyard. So you win the game when the horde has no cards left in the library, and the horde controls no creatures on the battlefield. You lose a game if you have zero life or if you draw a card and your library is empty. You can now say, for a more difficult challenge, try taking only two turns before the Horde's first turn. For an easier challenge, take four. You get this kind of Horde-ly horde poster. It's kind of a fun mini game that you can play. Um, you could team it up. You know, all sorts of stuff. There's a Theros one, too. I wonder if I have that. Um, I'm not sure I do. If I do, maybe we'll open it up on a random stuff uh, episode. But that is Battle of the Horde. I don't want to spend too much time. I've probably already spent too much time talking about Battle of the Horde. But I thought, you know, hey, it's a pretty interesting little... Uh, you know, side game that I'll probably never, ever, ever be able to fold uh, back up like it was originally folded. <laughs> but we will try to fold it. Cram. I like to keep this stuff together when I can because, I mean, if I ever want to play or somebody wants one or something, I keep them around. All right, so the next item I'm going to open is actually something that I talked about uh, in my die video, my dice video, spin down video, was this battle counter. Really cool, like Abacus. There used to be a girl uh, MTG YouTuber that made these in exchange for uh, trades. She would make them out of magic cards, stack them up, and then put a toothpick in with little Abacus stuff. But I've actually had this sitting around. So I figured, why not open it? The only problem with like Abacus style, oh boy, you get a nice little pouch. Max protection makes this, huh? Okay, I hear they make okay, um, okay uh, deck boxes, I think. So the only problem with an Abacus, obviously, is that if anyone touches it, like <laughs> it has the you just move the life as you see fit. So the tops may count for fives, the bottoms may count for tens or, or ones, I mean. However you want to set this up, uh, I'm sure it's pretty, um, you know, if you're playing commander, you could probably make it work. But again, yeah, you can make these fives and these ones or something, but I don't know, I thought it was kind of cool. It's stainless steel. And seems pretty strong. And then, you know, it's just got the black velvet pouch with it. Eh, I thought it'd be kind of fun to take a little closer look at this. It uh, claims to have a kick butt design, though. Um, minus five points for saying kick butt. I mean, if you're going to say, we all know what you meant, and you didn't have the balls to say ass. <laughs> balls. Um, and now I have... <laughs> Ready for this? Four random Fate Reforge packs. These are actually sent in. So, let's open them and play the Ugin Lottery. Fate Reforge is kind of a fun set. You know, you got a little bored casting 5-5 five, five dragons with mediocre abilities all the time. Misfire Adept. Holy crud. Okay, Hewed Stone Retainers, Renowned Weaponsmith, Misfire Adept, and Soul Flare. This is kind of a fun card to play with some graveyard um, interactions where you'd have like a First Striker, a Death Toucher, or whatever in the, um, in the graveyard, and then it became this crazy big thing, but you had to play around it. By the way, there's actually, I wanted to tell you, I was going to mention that at the start of the video, there happens to be at least currently 26 HQ packs left. Uh, well, 25. Looks like one order just came in. Um, for domestic shipping, three or more ship via priority, and four or more ship most likely with some uh, MTG headquarters sleeves. Maybe the three packs will as well. Um, so if you wanted to get some of those, there's actually a few left. Um, I had to take down the video because something was going on with the ordering system, but 
Everything seems work to be working just fine now. Frostwalker, Mardu Shadow Spear, Dark Deal, and Archfiend of Depravity. Well, if I was drafting or I don't know, Soul Flare is not that good because most often it's a six mana four four. You know, <clears throat> what's most likely is maybe you'll get a six mana four four with flying or something. Fascination. Shifting loyalties and limited, I'm speaking of. Channel harm. And an arc bond. And a foil bloodfell caves. And a windscarred craig. The land is real. <clears throat> These packs are kind of empty. I don't know if we're going to find a foil Ugin. So we had a battle of the horde. A, some fate reforge packs. Got a couple other little random things to open. Abzan Kinguard, Vault Breaker, Neutralizing Blast, and a Mythic at least, Ghastly Contraption. Seven mana, exile all creature cards from target player's graveyard in a face down pile. Shuffle that pile, then manifest those cards. So you know, not not weak, not a not a poop ability, I would I would say. But no Ugin. That's alright. Thanks for sending them in, nonetheless. What else do we have here? Um, how about... How about this? I'm at a random Aldrich Moon intro pack that I think Wizards of the Coast sent me before they uh, said I was a bad person and they didn't want to be associated with me anymore. <laughs> oh, Wizards. So now we all get to enjoy it anyway. So I guess we get the last laugh. I'm not going to open this because it's just an intro deck. And again, like I said, I'm going to save up a bunch of these, try to get 20 or 30 of them as I open a bunch of these through the random stuff videos. And then we'll do some sort of get people to play magic promotion. But we did, we do have two uh, packs of Eldritch Moon. You know, it's funny. Um, you know, I'm looking forward to coming back to magic. I did, uh, personally enforce my skip Kaladesh. I mean, I opened the boxes, but I have not done a single Kaladesh draft. I have not played any sealed events. And uh, it's been okay. I definitely miss it, but um, I followed through and uh, maybe Aether Revolt, you know, will also help reignite a bit of uh, good feels. I'm sure it will. Pre-release always does that. Rise from the grave. Rise from the grave. Altered Beast. Vexing Scuttler, Scuttler, Murder, Murder, and Harmless Offering. All-time best art of a magic card. If you disagree with me, I will fight you in the street, anywhere, anytime. All right. All right, let's see what's in this other pack. Oh, I'm so used to opening Pokemon cards now. Blessed Alliance. Faith Unbroken, Gnarled, Gnarled Wood Dryad, and Descended Mindbender. Eight mana, five, five with the merge. Ulvenwald Captive, pretty strong card. Oh, and then Double Rare Valdarian Pariah that flips into Abolisher of Bloodlines, which is very good. Definitely very good. You get some sweet madness shenanigans going with her. That's always fun. And then we're going to finish up with actually a little... Uh, this was sent in too. A Garrick pop figure. I actually have the one, the purple one. But I don't have... The purple one's behind me. But I don't have the non-purple one. And these, you know, some people are worried about leaving them in boxes. Pop figures, they make so many of these that they really have very little collectability. There are some exclusives, like the people that go to Hot Topic and stuff like that and get those exclusives. Or I have this random, uh, I have a Frodo one behind me that's worth like 70 bucks or something because they were it was only ever in claw machines and I won it in a claw machine, thankfully, because of claw struck. But for the most part, they're all very low value. They're just fun to have around. I always, I, when they have these like big head designs, I always kind of expect their heads to bobble. But overall, a pretty fun little design. I'll put him on my desk at work. So he'll go to good use. 
pretty decent design though. You've got the cape, you've got the spikes in the back there. You captured the long hair. The axe actually looks really good. It looks a lot like Garrick's axe. Body is posable, so he's be a little fun little guy to put on my desk at work and people will have no idea what the hell it is. So I appreciate you sending that in. Well, uh, that I think will conclude opening Random Stuff Episode 5. Uh, next week, I'm going, uh, one of the items at the very least will be a booster box. So it'll be a little bit longer episode, but uh, I figured we'll do it just a sauce style. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you're having a great weekend. If you're watching this when it drops, we'll talk to you again real soon.